Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've just decided, dude, we have the skill set, we're above average, we have the deck, and now let's make the time. We're going to hit Legend and Hearthstone today. Now, before I go doing the laddering, I have a little announcement to make about something exciting that we got planned here among the day-night community. We are going to do an official day-night 30-day project slash 30-day project challenge. Although it's not really about a challenge, it's just about doing something awesome. So first, let me explain what a 30-day project is, or as I like to call them, one-month projects. So a one-month project, the basic idea of it, is that there's always things that you might want to be. Maybe you have always wanted to write a book, uh, become a novelist. Maybe you want to just learn carpentry. Maybe you want to get in shape, something like that. Oftentimes, the dream that you have is really big, like writing a book, making a game, making a movie, developing an elaborate skill set in some subject. This can often take years, and I don't know if you've done the same thing I have, but you know, when I was younger, I was like, I have an idea. I'm going to combine World of Warcraft with Starcraft with Team Fortress 2, and then I sit down to write some code, and three weeks later, I'm like, yeah, this this is a lot. I'm not going to do this. Now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to just play one race in StarCraft, right? It's easy to get overly ambitious and that winds up ruining your ability to make any progress. And this is the beauty of a one month project. The gist of it is you come up with the area you want to work in. Suppose it's, you know, writing a book or learning carpentry. And what you do is you come up with something that you can produce in one month. So that might be just the first chapter of a book. This might be a really simple wooden table if it's carpentry. Hell, even like though games take years, you just make a simple one month game that might just be recreating the first level of Mario. That's it. And because it's one month, first of all, you can wrap your head around all the things that you can do in a month way better than you can over the course of years. So it's much easier to plan. In particular, you can break it down into like week one, week two, week three, week four. Second of all, one month is not that much time. You're gonna get that juicy hit of dopamine by completing a thing when you get to the end. And most importantly of all, you're gonna learn a skill set and you're going to learn your own capabilities in terms of time. You're learning to be your own producer. For instance, if you're an author and you think that you can write 5,000 words a week, so you wanna make 20,000 words in a one month project, you might find that just due to how life works, you're actually hitting more like three or 4,000. You know what that means? That's fine. If you're only writing 4,000 words a week, just take five weeks. This isn't a time deadline thing, right? This is you trying to work on yourself, but then next time you go, wow, I'm starting to realize I am getting pretty good at estimating my capability set. Or similarly, if you are you know, trying to build a table, maybe you think it's gonna take a full month and then you buy the tools and two weeks later you're done and you're like, oh, oh, that was easier than I expected. And so I've talked a lot about this idea of one month projects because a lot of the skills that I try to learn, I just concatenate one month projects right after the other. Uh, and I know a lot of people have had success with this. And since I've been talking about it a lot and there was some interest in it, we are starting the official Day9 TV 30 day project challenge. Look here, this is the Discord. This is discord.com slash, uh, or discord.gg slash Day9 TV if you wanna join. If you go to the announcements channel, which is right here at the top, You'll see that there is a Google form to fill out uh, in order to participate, um, or just at the very least to sort of gauge your interest. It's going to be on April 4th to May 4th. And the way that we're making it a little special is that we're kind of forcing you to answer a few questions before you begin your project. We're giving you some extra structure, like what are you gonna do week one, week two, week three, week four? What are your deliverables? And at the end, we're going to ask, and this is totally optional, for you to create some sort of final presentation piece that can be as simple or as dramatic as you want. For instance, if your one month challenge was just to start regularly going to the gym, you might just say at the end, guys, I went to the gym 20 times last month. Perfect. Or maybe you are an author who wrote a first chapter and you think it sucks, but you're still really proud that you churned it out. You don't have to share it with us, right? Just be like, guys, I wrote a chapter. This is more than I've ever written, and I'm really excited to do a second draft. 
That's fantastic. Just do that. You can even go to the other end of the extreme where if you worked on like a game project, you can like share a build with the community, make GIFs, do a little write up on it, anything you so desire. It's all going to be contained in here in this little form. And I'm, of course, going to be talking about it on the show throughout. I just really think that this is a really nice uh, opportunity to pick something that you've just been interested in. Uh, pick some identity that you want to have, that you want to be, and just to give it a shot, because, I mean, it's only one month. It's only one month. And remember, it's not the hard deadline of May 4th. We'll certainly be talking about, you know, new final presentation type things coming in in the weeks afterwards. If you're at, like, seven weeks, you, it, all it means is that you maybe misgaged your capability, which is completely normal with this sort of thing. Um, and you just restart over next month with a, dip, or a different, more scoped down project. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This is going to be our first attempt at this. We have no idea if this is going to be uh, like 20 people participating or whether this is going to be like 20,000 people participating. It could be a range. Um, and so we have the lovely mods who are helping out with it to help keep things organized. We're going to have, you know, sub chat channels. There's a lot of existing communities on Day9 TV, like, you know, just general gaming. There's development, um, you know, art and creative writing. There's all sorts of uh, existing groups. And we want to make sure that there's a place where you can go to chat, to build motivation, to sort of share where you're at. Maybe if you want an accountability buddy that you can just ping each other and you know bounce ideas off each other or just keep tabs on one another. That's great. We're going to try to explore, experiment, and make this a really nice experience for everyone. It's going to start on April 4th. Not April 1st, because that would be fucking stupid. April 4th is when we're going to do it. It's going to run till May 4th. And I hope, um, you know, if you haven't if you don't have any idea of what you want to do, just maybe think of what you want to do for the next two weeks or so. Maybe you decide to participate. We'd love to have you. That'd be great. I am now going to open Hearthstone because today oh, we just we got to hit Legend, man. We just got to do this. Ah, yes. Snarf soon. Isn't that exciting? Isn't this great? I'd like to give a shout out to all the wonderful admins and Eric who really helped sort of think through and organize this. I see rhetorical meow posting in chat. Woody Adrian also brought it up. And throughout the day, I would be thrilled to hear any ideas for projects that you guys have. You know, like for instance, me, I'm working on a little a little Unity project with Eric that's just sort of a for fun thing. Oh, here's the socks that I was looking for earlier. And I probably won't really intend to share anything on May 4th, but um, the reason being that until I feel like it's in done-ish state, that's when I'd like to share it because I'm in the unusual position that I have a huge audience of people and anytime I share something, the droves of questions come in and I want to make sure I'm someone who's not spending time answering questions. I want to spend time working. You know what I mean? Because I am totally one of those people that's just like, ooh, I'm so excited about the thing. Ooh, I want to talk about it a lot. Woo, yeah, woo. And I can absolutely burn like a full day worth of work talking to three different people about the one idea and not doing anything. So um, that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, and I'm going to talk to Eric about it. And we're going to get our pull requests all beautifully allayed and going. Oh, it's going to be excellent. Back request. Oh, God, not back request. Well, that is the funniest thing. Part of me wants to try to do that over the summer when um, Sean Bouchard and Bill Grainer have a lighter workload. Now, this is an interesting question. How do we win this matchup? I think the answer is, uh-oh, here comes a Despasaurus. Despacito! Do you want to sit in my lap, sweetie pie? Yeah, here's my lap. Come on. This be... Yeah, maybe... Maybe the lap... Oh, I'm sorry. Now I, I see how this happened. I, I put these socks right on your spot. Let me move those out of the way. That's why those socks were here and I was initially confused. So he doesn't have terribly many minions. So I mean, I may as well just prepare to remove it. Uh. King's butt. So the win condition for us is to get Frostlich Jaina and to endlessly freeze 
his nerds. Uh, Dirty Rat to Meteor, or Dirty Rat to Polymorph is a great choice. Uh, one of my biggest project right now. That's great. This is a, an absolutely critical card to remove. You're such a sweet little gray cat. You know, I actually might do a different one-month project, something that's just very light and very simple, which is to make something with LEDs with my Arduino kit. I got an Arduino kit for Christmas, and I've been really wanting an Arduino kit for a long time. So now that I have it, I'm just like, yeah. Okay, so now this is a good opportunity to run the Dirty Rat down to guaranteed kill a man. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> well, I was hoping it wouldn't be one of those. That's fine. A what kit? An Arduino. So an Arduino is a... Um, it is... <clears throat> Jesus, excuse me. Um, it's a really simple chipset. Um that you can, it, it, it's, uh, God, I'm trying to think how to describe it. It's, uh, it is a hardware chip that is really easy to work with and really easy to program. <clears throat> and it's basically built for like DIY robot style pro projects. It's like a microcontroller. All right, so that's good. You know, Dirty Rat is fine to throw down relatively quickly. All we have to do is not burn Frostlich Jaina. If he does that, I think we just might concede straight up. Alright. Well, he beat us. And that's totally fine. This is really kind of a funny matchup because we can't go to Fatigue because... Um, you know, he just keeps playing King's Banes. And so the way that we win is that we get a water elemental down and we just keep freezing him. And it actually took me a little while to figure out how to win that matchup. But it's really cool because if you just get like one water elemental is terrifyingly scary for that deck. Because literally it just makes him unable to do anything. So <clears throat> we're against a paladin. Hi, Despy. I am going to send Frostlet to Jaina back because even though I think it's hilarious to keep her, um, well, this deck is a good idea for climbing. Oh, it's it was fantastic for climbing, Marcus. This this deck has been crushing. We have a sixty five percent win rate over fifty games, and we even threw like four four or so of those games. This is an excellent excellent deck. So, props to Stan Sifka for just figuring it out. But yeah, an Arduino is, is a really nice... Um, it's not the win rate, it's the duration of these games. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, that makes complete sense, Marcus. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. Now these, these games are about 20 minutes a pop, but they're way more interesting. Um, they're way more fun, and it, it's really making the climb far more joyous. Um, and and that, that's really important to me. I play Hearthstone for fun and for joy. I do not play it to try to feel like I have a big card player deck or something like that, or I'm like, no, nah, no, I'm like really kind of, look at my, my, the number of blahs that I've gotten in the season and I beat this man and here's the replay on, on a third party site, bleh. I don't really care about that. For me, that in a lot of ways, this is like a Rube Goldberg machine. I assemble the Rube Goldberg pieces <laughs> and I blow some shit up and it's really satisfying. Um... And so, getting to Legend every now and again. Um, an you know, I think is an acceptable thing to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to go for it today. TL5, Six Forces, Unrelated. Do you have a big card player deck? Oh, my card player deck is certainly precisely average. Undoubtedly. 
I think I'm going to play the Dirty Rat. I mean, it's either someone small and cheap, or it's something very scary like Sunkeeper Trim that I want to pull down. No Spiteful in this deck? Oh, goodness, no. Goodness, no. Spiteful Summoner is a great tempo card, and this is just not a tempo deck. This is a control deck. Um, but yeah, an Arduino is really great for doing like little robot style projects. And the project that I want to make is, it's one that I just saw where someone had a um, accelerometer, which is basically a device that can detect when you're tilting like this. You know, like if any of you have played Flower um, on PlayStation, it used the accelerometer to detect when you were tilting and that's how you got the sort of flowy movie motion. He might just try to go bang, 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 hit. In which case, I'll hit him with the meteor. Meteor. Okay, I'm still going to hit him with the meteor, you know. Oh, he did it with the wrong ones. I should have kept that one up. So let's go ahead and be a responsible netizen and blow up all of his shit. You see, the accelerometer detects what your tilt is, and then you have LED lights that sit on top of that, so when you tilt it, the lights fall to one side like they're pebbles. Or rain, or something like that. Hmm. Pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have seen the project where the guy just built a, a cube that when you tilt it, it sort of drips to the sides. It's really nice. Because I really like um, physics and simulations. Um, and it's basically a 2D simulation of just a bunch of things on the ground. Really? Okay. <laughs> if he hits here, he actually might not be able to... Okay. Well, this is actually a little trickier than it might look. Oh, no, we're at 24. Some of you thought it said we were at 14. to flame strike. Nah. I think this is the play. With 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so you can deal 10 damage. So we can basically block 7 and then blow some stuff up on turn 8. Morning Mong says, want to come draft my MTG cube? I'm Bay Area. It is kind of tempting. I have not gotten to do enough IRL magic. Although, I, 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 I've been talking about this before. I, I have dual decks, and I freaking love dual decks so much. Does he pop the block? That's pretty nice. So I think I have to do like this. And in some ways this is nice because if he goes to face, then uh, I still have the Arcane Artificer. Reporting for duty. So he's used the level up, he's used the Sun Keeper. Hmm. 
was close. I think I think Jaina ing now is what's super necessary because we still have the ice block up. And he's gonna be able to pop it. Because he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 11, 12, 13. And we have Oh wait, we have 14 health. Oh my god, that is very lucky. Repeat after me, Sean. I'm a very lucky boy. <sighs> there is something I kind of want to talk about on air. I want to talk about feelings a little bit. Also, I didn't put on my deodorant, so I'm just going to put that on. I had uh, experience that is... Oh, he's going to play the, yeah, Life Fuse Stegaman. Uh, or as I like to call him, a Megalostegalodon. Yeah, that's that is such a smart trade. Well, I mean, I think that the key here is that I'm going to Raven Familiar to just get a blow up all your shit. This is a nice card. I mean, we could very well just draw a Meteor. Draw, or can you draw a Blizzard? I'm actually feeling a Blizzard on this turn. My call's been pretty on point today. Talk about feelings after the game. Potato, potato. I guess we did draw the meteor, you know. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That is far and away the best. Simulacrum to help me draw a second sweeper. Um, arcane missiles to help me set things to one so I can ping. Another ice block to buy me time. I mean, jeez. I mean, that's that's unfair. Holy shit. I mean, or we can just get the Baron. Yeah, I mean. Okay, so. Simulacrum first. Play the Raven. Nice. Play the Raven. Wow, I didn't get it. Oh well. So I'm just going to do this. And I think that this is completely appropriate given that his deck is kind of founded upon building a board and supporting it. Your tomes have been ridiculous this week. I, yeah, and PTV. I really think it's not the most reasonable card that has ever been printed in the game of Snarfstone. We'll have to sit down and have a mass agreement party. <sighs> well, again, I'm really feeling a blizzard here, so. But I, there's this weird thing. This happens to me sometimes. It's been happening a lot when I've been working out. I don't know if this is because I've been... Like, someone... Okay, so I was working out. Here's what happened today. I was working out. I was, like say 10 minutes into my 45 minute run a um, and something that really angered me six seven years ago popped into my head and sometimes when you remember things that pissed you off like oh yeah that teacher I had in high school yeah he was a dick you don't feel anger you remember that you were angry at the time but you don't have anger but like I had anger. I was so un just gah, like I was pieced. I'm doing this to let me heal because if I hit any of these other nerds. Oh my god to pop divine shields. Are we kidding me? I can't believe I have that second ice block too. Anyways, and it just—I just—I was actually just like really, I was just really upset, and I was just—I was just in a bad mood while I was—I was just on the elliptical, and I kept trying to be like, "No, it's fine. It's okay. It's—it's—it's it's, it's in the past. We're okay." And my brain was like, "Do you remember that thing that happened like two weeks later? Yeah, that pissed you off too, huh?" And I was like. Oh my, okay. Uh, 
I mean, I really don't think that there is any way in which I would describe this as fair in any regard. It's, it's not. That's a good point. Until I Dragon's Fury and ruin his whole life. Okay, so I think it's Artificer time because we run this down. Play this. That sucked. There's a few ways we can play this out. I think this is the way I'm actually going to choose to play it out. into this thing. Welcome late, my friend. This is actually like pretty tough. Because I have to hit here. Well, I could go hit, hit, and then like explosive rune. So I have to hit one here. I'll have to hit one like this, and then I'll have to do this, and then just hope it's a... Okay. Oh, this is gonna be a close one. I think the light fused Stegadon is the only thing that really kills us. I know he's played one Direwolf Alpha. I don't know if he's played two. Um. Well, I guess we just have to draw the Blizzard. I would say that was really lucky, but I feel like every single time I play against a paladin, I'm about to die, and then we just win. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of good cards in the deck for us, too. Options. I don't think he has that many left, yeah. Reporting for duty. Okay. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. It's kind of an uh, amazing. Excuse me, you are on draw in a lot of ways. Boy, this deck is annoying to play against. Like, my deck is annoying for him to play against. I mean, we had two Blizzards, a Dragon's Fury, uh, Baron. What? Meter on a 3 1 1s. Yeah. Yeah. Kidding me? That's how we lose, man. He plays the life he's staggered on, gets plus attack, and we lose. Hi, sweetie pie. Yeah, you want? Do you want to chew on me? You just want to have that arm? Is that your arm now? Hi. Right. Yeah. 
love you. She keeps thinking that I want to kick her off the mouse pad, so she like wraps her arms around me. She's like, Grr. Okay. So these matches always feel very scary, and they wind up not really being so scary. Um, Polymorph, I think we're going to keep. Doomsayer, I think we don't want. Raven Familiar is great because it lets us draw a big scary spell, which is nice. But so here's here's my thought against Warlock. There's um, two types of Warlocks. There's the traditional control lock that uses Void Lords. And the way this control lock works is it has a Rin that can blow up my deck. That's the biggest danger. So we have a Polymorph for that. Or it summons a boatload of Void Lords, which we can basically just deal with because it's just kind of slow. And we are the ultimate grinder deck. I mean, we have double sweepers in a lot of categories, double Polymorphs, so we, we have a lot of answers. The problem is that there is the other control lock deck that is a Doom Guard cube lock. And the way that deck works is it has about eight, you know, it has ten scary threats. Two mountain giants, just big eight eights for four. Uh, it has two void lords, uh, the three nines that summon three one threes. It has two doom guards. And um, that sounds like six threats, but then they often run two cubes, which can eat and clone. And then one or two faceless manipulators, and sometimes even Taldorim. And Taldorim is the 3-3 three, three that is, it's like a mini faceless manipulator. Sir Maynard, what a pleasure to see you. Maynard, let me just say, happy 60 months. I know your badge doesn't say as much, but I know it is. Okay. Um, and the thing is that um, if it's that cube lock deck, I need to value my polymorphs differently and value playing against the Void Lords differently. This is a dead giveaway that this is the Rin control lock. So we would love a Skulking Geist. We'd love Frost Lich Jaina. Uh, most of all, we'd love a Skulking Geist because we want to blow up the Dark Packs. Uh, this guy is not a threat, so I'm just going to make like an Australian in Jurassic Park and shoot her. Taldorim is Starcraft. Oh, his name is Taldoram. Taldoram? Talmadar? Talmadar? It's told some some shit. I don't care. Okay, so we have two polymorphs now. So he's going to get a Void Lord. So in his eyes, he's going to see this and he's going to be like, I fucked up. Here's, here's how I fucked up. If he has Ren, he's going to play Ren right now. Guarantee that she gets killed so I can't polymorph her, which guarantees that he can blow up my deck. Oh, the Stonehill Defender created it. Well, yeah, that... Well, I mean, he has a second one in the deck, so... What are you gonna do? Both his Void Lords are in hand. Okay. So he's gonna get to blow up your deck zone pretty soon. A Dirty Rat can provide an ample counter, though. Let me make sure I'm drinking enough water. So this deck is very easy to play with if you can properly answer Rin. Yes. Oh, yes. They'll serve me Free kill. Now. So we need to save the Dirty Rat to be able to pull down Aziz Ansari once he has unlocked it. So this will summon nothing. We're just going to shoot her. See, he, he also has to be very careful about when he plays his his nerds. We don't have a good play right now. I'm just going to play the Medivh's Valet. Because, I mean, this is not an important card for the sake of, you know, getting good tempo and stuff like that um, against this deck. I mean, his deck is about a few different types of bursts. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, we have a Meteor for this, so this is fine. Two Dirty Rats is really good. 
Recall that he does have Void Lords. So theoretically, we can go Dirty Rat, Polymorph, Dirty Rat, Polymorph. And his other big win condition is Nizoth to resurrect Void Lords and Blood Reaver Gul'dan to resummon Void Lords. I mean, that's basically the deck, is you get a crap ton of Void Lords. Thorokus says, how would you pronounce my name? There you have it. I'm gonna play another seal, probably. Dark Pack to ensure that he doesn't overdraw on accident. This is really helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Dirty Rat, Polymorph Ping, Dirty Rat, Polymorph Ping, possibly as a solution. We'll see. We'll see what winds up coming down. He does have two Void Lords in hand, remember. So that kind of stinks, but even if we do get the two Void Lords, it's okay. Fourth seal. Bread Gravy says, how would you pronounce my name? I pronounce it my favorite son. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh. D9 spoke. I shivered. It was so awesome. So he has the final seal in his hand, which is good. I'm go ahead and play the Raven Familiar. This is an acceptable time for him to panic and slam down um, uh, a Twisting Nether. It's completely fine. Nordic Chaos is down. I'd like to tell you that I've been loving your videos on YouTube for several years. They brought me brought me through some challenging times where I wasn't feeling so good. Your presence is cheerful, so thank you sincerely. Thank you. I really appreciate that, because I'm not having the best day. I mean, actually, the day's fine. We're just having a little bit of frowniness. So, I really appreciate that. I will I will feed off your positivity and pour it back into my body. So, he has Aziz on Sorry. So, we're going to play the Dirty Rat. It's going to summon down... Okay, that's a good one. Let's also just take one more shot, because we could again get the Mega Demon. Alright, so this this will slow the game down, but uh, it doesn't mean that we win outright. That's positive, but he does have another Twisting Nether. He does have another Ren. He does have two Void Lords. So these are the trickinesses that we're going to have to deal with. Um, this deck does run two Twisting Nethers. And I'm kind of debating with myself what the appropriate next move is here. I, th I think I do want to Polymorph the Void Lord. I, th I think I do. This solves a lot of problems, just having this out. The reason it solves a lot of problems is every one Void Lord he plays generates minimum two more Void Lords. Okay, so now this is where he gets his Ren back. This this was this was an odd odd maneuver from him, for sure. Um, he probably is thinking that his only way to win is if he uses. Um, The Mega Man. Time melts away. As if he uses Azari, the Devourer. So let's see. I can go. Baron Geddon is going to be my ultimate heal play after our deck is blown up. Dragon's Breath is an option. Hmm, I um. So I think what I'll do is I actually will use Dragon's Breath. I think so. We have the blizzards left. So I go hit, hit, and then I get the extra damage in. And now I'm going to run down this, and we're going to see if anything lived. Oh, 
kind of sucks, but it's all right. Twisting Nether is the big bad problem for Dragon Collar Alana. I mean, he just, he just pops it down, and it's dirtily done. I want to save the meteor for Azari. Aziz. <laughs> no, I mean, I get it. I get it. That makes sense. Wish I would have had that earlier. That would have made my planning a little, little bit easier. It's okay. I'll pop it down soon. Keep in mind, he still has not played, like, Rin. Like, the proper Rin. So will blow up a Dark Pact, which is fine. I think that was a mistake on that turn when Ina's off to use the Dragon's thing. this for two reasons. One is that I'm not going to get a chance to use it anymore. <laughs> Alright, so he has five cards left, so he's, I mean, he's just going to slam down Azari. Boom. I'm out of cards. I still think we can, we can win this. It's going to be very long and grindy, but we have just a lot of healing power in the deck. He basically is just going to get three Void Lords. The Cabal's Tomes, I'll miss. He, he, I mean, he may just Twisting Nether. It's fine. So let's see, he has four cards left. Uh, I mean, I kind of am forced to run out of Lana. I, I'm, I, he'll almost certainly Twisting Nether, but I'm not sure what else we're going to be able to do. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't really change very much that I think in this matchup we generally have an advantage because we have the Dirty Rats and the Polymorphs to deal with a lot of his threats. Um, but you'll recall on turn 5 I played the Doomsayer and then went, Ugh, oh god, oh god, because then he was just able to run out the, uh, Whatever little nerdy guy. So many demons. So is there any way? Nope. No That's totally okay. We generally have a lot of ways to deal with Rin in the form of polymorphs, and his deck is sufficiently slow. Uh, he just got two Rins, and we accidentally played a Doomsay in a turn where he could have responded with it. So um, that's all right. I think that what I have to identify is just cautiousness. Just I need to be glacially slow in that um, matchup. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's he did get three rins, one from the um, Stonehill Defender that then got re-resurrected as Nizoth. That then he also just had the rin in his deck, anyways. And I want to stress something. This is one of those situations where if you look at how the, the the match actually went, he got down to four cards and whoo he got down to four cards. It was it was pretty it was pretty close. 
replacing the Medivh's Valet. Um, Medivh's Valet, I think, is not the, the most sick card that we have. But I do think it's nice to have something on the low end. I'm leery of... First of all, I'm leery of removing anything because this is, despite the slowness of the games, I, this is the highest win rate deck I have ever played climbing up to the... on the climb to the legend. A bit of reality's trickling in. Whereabouts? Top right corner of the camera. Oh, god damn. Wow. It was completely imperceptible to me and I was staring right at it. Trust me. Okay. This is good. We'll take two damage and just heal right up again. Don't have tons of early anti-aggro. Medivh's is sick in that matchup, right? I mean, he's, he's just nice. I mean, you just play a 2-3 and that's kind of obnoxious. He's particularly nice um, for getting procs for Frostlich Jaina. There's plenty of things that will have four health. Um, I think that the the way the way that Medivh's Valet feels like shit is when you're unwilling to just play it without the secret. Because I mean, if you're against aggro, you're waiting for it, and then you like on turn six get the ice block and the dive doesn't feel that good, you know. Vance is still periodically we watch the holiday bash for Brood War. Yeah. Genuinely one of the funniest things I've ever seen. God, dude. I, I actually think that my brother is the funniest human in the world. And of course, Nick, Nick's number one because I have the bias because he's my brother. And then like all the people who are tied for second were there on that sofa. Right? It's just like Jeff and Artosis <laughs> who are so funny. Oh my god, those guys are so funny. Um, And I've known him for like, you know, almost 20 years. They're just, oh my god, they're so fucking funny. Jesus. Um, I mean, they're, I, I am attending, as was announced, the uh, 20th anniversary for StarCraft. Not this weekend, but next weekend. You're all sliding on that sofa, too. God, I don't know where the hell they got that garbage sofa from. Okay, so Skull of the Minari is traditionally not run in a deck that has Ren, because when you get Aziz Ansari, the Skull will pull it down. And so that completely backfires and ruins the purpose of it. This is typically run in a Q block, where he's trying to summon uh, a Doom Gourd. We have our two Polymorphs, which is fine. He might chomp it with a cube, and I think it's probably appropriate to... Ah, maybe it's not. Um... I, I mean, I feel really comfortable, to be honest. I think I maybe just meteor this and kind of chill. Meteor and chill. Meteor and chill feels good. With all the... Oh, wow. He doesn't have any other demons in hand. Well, that's very valuable. Um, I'll likely do a dragon. A dragony move. So I'm doing the 20th anniversary for the StarCraft stream. I don't, I don't really know what's happening on it, uh, but I am doing it. <laughs> yes, oh yes, they'll serve me now. Dark Pact, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get a Doom Guard out. Okay, yeah, he just, he just messed up. That's all. Doom Guards are your core resource against mage or anyone who's like controlling in any regard so i mean we just we just blow this up and then it's very sensible for him to trade this in the reason that the doom guard is so essential in this matchup is that um i have a ton of sweepers with jaina and the artificers i have lots of ways to heal up against slow general chipping damage and so, um, um, 
the the way that he's going to kill us is with doing something Doom Guardly related. Um, we might say, oh, you definitely want to polymorph that Doom Guard because won't he get another? Um, well, let me think for just one second. This is just correct. This is fine. <laughs> okay. We might say, ooh, isn't it dangerous to play the Doom Guard? Or excuse me, to Meteor the Doom Guard? Because won't he possibly be able to resurrect that uh, with the Blood Reaver Gul'dan? Recall that he's played one Void Lord, which he then immediately Faceless manipulated. So that's two big demons and six small demons and one Doom Guard. He's basically weighted his resurrections extremely hard towards one threes instead of the five sevens. And therefore, when I look at the polymorphs, why would I save them? Two reasons. One, this deck has cubes. I want to ensure that I have answers um, for cubes. And the secondary reason is that I have a Frostlich Jaina, so I'm going to be summoning a whole lot there. So I think that this, I think that this play is correct. I'm marginally concerned that we could die the very next turn, no matter what we do. Um, the reason being that I have not drawn a Skulking Geist to pop his Dark Packs, so he could do something like a Doom Guard comes down, and then he plays Spirit Singer Umbra, cubes the Doom Guard, resummons two Doom Guards, hit me, Dark Packs it, but he actually he doesn't have enough mana for that. He doesn't have enough mana because it's turn nine. So I think we're actually okay. I think we're actually okay. God damn, I sure run like God in this game. This is uh, an absolute nut card in this matchup. So we have a lot of healings. Wow! No demons in hand! Wow! We're very likely just gonna Skulking Geist. Just instantly plop that down. For a long time, I just thought that this matchup was just terrible for us because he gets like a ton of five sevens, a ton of three nines with taunt, resurrects them, Blood Reaver Gul'dan resurrects them, and I should lose. And like every time I play against it, I, I think I have a 100% win rate against the Doomguard Q block and like a 80% win rate against Rinlock. And I thought that those were, because I mean like against Rin, oh, he blows up my deck, I'm screwed. But oh, wait, I do run two Polymorphs and I do run two Dirty Rats. You'll note that it's extremely difficult to remove enough. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Hellfire? Is this what you want to do? You want a Hellfire? That's fine. I healed for more than I would have ordinarily. So now he's at 10 mana. This is right when he can do his huge burst combos with Doom Guards. Except now I'm going to blow up the card that permits him to do this. This should also delete one Mortal Coil. No, he's not running Mortal Coil. That's funny, because when I was playing Q-Block, I... You, <laughs> <laughs> Next level. The gracious bitch is patient. Oh, yes. They'll serve me now. Not a good move. Watch. I Blizzard. He now can't do anything. This will summon a Doom Guard, which I now get to Polymorph. Boom. Re he really, really misplayed. Well, not misplayed, but I just had the perfect answer, because now he has... He, he just he cannot deal burst damage, right? I've blown up one Doom Guard. The other one has been meteored. So his only hope is to resurrect a Doom Guard with Blood Reaver Gul'dan, but because he Spirit Singer this Void Lord, he's now going to have just an infinite army of one threes. So, for me to say a misplay was, I think, just a grossly inaccurate statement. I was, you know, just getting a little trigger happy. Wow. 
This poor guy. <laughs> I don't know what this card's gonna be. <laughs> this my deck is real annoying to play against. This is this is the this is an annoyer, this deck right here. <sighs> yeah, Wadi Ta says, yeah, only a misplay if he was stream sniping. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. I was just like Ugh, spat my drink out. Misplay. We could get Nazoth here. It's an equally acceptable outcome. Because I've seen a Mountain Giant burned. I've seen Spirit Singer. I've seen both Doom Guards. I've seen both Void Lords. I've seen a Faceless Manipulator. I've seen a Cube. Two cu So, I don't know. I don't know. It, seem, it seems very probable. We've seen both his Librarians. We've seen both his Libertarians. That's a very pretty looking 3 1 you have. <laughs> I'm just chuckling because. I mean, I. I You'll you'll look at the board now. I don't have threats. I, I got a 3-6 and the possibility of another 3-6. This is the grindiest deck. I should be absurdly ahead in cards. Fuck. A whole bunch of one threes, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh my god. Oh, this poor dude. I mean, I don't know why I keep using the word recall so much today. It's it's a nice word. It's one of those, like, I'm a professor of a hard science. Recall the theorem that we, we studied last week. Planck's theorem. Awesomest theorem? Dude, Pick's theorem. Pick's theorem is so good. I hunger. I think it's Pick's Theorem or Pick's Formula. Pick's Theorem. Oh yeah. It, yeah, it's the area of a polygon whose vertices are points on a lattice. It's, it's the funny. It's the funniest fucking th theorem to me because it actually it actually sounds like a guy who's trying to be lazy and just guessed. This is the last threat in the deck, right? I'm almost out of Except cards. for arguably Nazoth. You could cube this, right? Oh, he hadn't played both Cobalt Librarians. Hi, Despy. You're getting a little bit greedy with your space, and I love you. See, I got a pattern when I push it, so you're a good cat. That's what tricks you. I did it again. 
good loot, so let's not get too greedy. I just, I, I need to just throw out an arcane artificer at any point where I can gain armor acceptably. I think that's it. But Pick's Theorem is basically if you if you have an integer lattice, which is a fancy way of saying, imagine you have pegs on a graph and you have a peg at 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0. Like at every single point you have like a little peg. Imagine if you took a rubber band and strung it around the pegs so that you kind of have an enclosed area. How much area do you enclose? Right? What's the area of this polygon? Now what you could do is you could be like, well, I know what the area of like a triangle is, so I'll do this triangle plus this triangle plus this triangle plus this triangle, all the different triangles. Well, this guy pick basically figured out that the area that it encloses is it's the no you you just count the pegs that are inside. You count the pegs on the boundary, and the area is the number of pegs inside plus half the number of pegs on the boundary minus one. There you go. That's the formula. And and the reason I think that this is so funny to me is that it, it, it sounds lazy. It's like, well, I don't know, if you imagine each, you know, each contained peg it's kind of like a square right so that's like you know a full area and if it's on the boundary it's kind of like half a square so you know half of that and I don't know it could be wrong minus one Turn 2, turn 3, turn 4, turn 5, turn 6, turn 7, turn 8, turn 9. Fuck. Maybe I, maybe I should have played the ice block. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. And the funny thing is, like, you could say, well, I pulled down the 5-4, maybe that was a bad, dirty rat. Well, then he would have played a 5-4 that would have buffed his dudes, man. Like, Wind Fury plus on plus one, plus health, plus attack. Like, all those are terrible for us. You asked for it. Oh, it is on. All right, that was a fast one. Against a mage, mage, mage. Well, guys, it's a mage versus mage. Let's draw our Frost Lich Jaina first. It's going to be our goal. Arvin Dillon says, In the minus one, do you having four pegs or only one fourth instead of. Maybe. Could be. Could be. I don't know where you're getting four pegs that are only one fourth. Because it's any polygon. It's a polygon with any number of uh, points. Four on the four edges, but there's not four edges. There could be 47 edges. That's what's that's what's so funny about it. Okay, so we don't necessarily have any information. It's a, a control mage who is invariably going to draw Frostlich Jaina uh, first, or it's the burn mage. It's one of those two. Why well, is Pick Serum's useful when you want to calculate that? Oh yeah, it's it's a much faster computation than it's 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 almost a trivially easy computation, to be honest. Oh, he coined this out. Okay, this this tells me he's probably aggressive. <sighs> he hasn't played any cards yet, which gives me a little bit of concern. 
So we're worried about Counterspell, we're worried about Explosive Rune. I think it's a good time to just play the Doomsayer. Because if it's an Explosive Rune... Yeah. So this is this is almost certainly a Counterspell. Run into the counter spell. Rip it down. I'm late. I'm late. God, that yeah, I guess that makes sense because that's been in hand for a while. But now we can get a blizzard. Dylan says, if you have n edges, then each of the edges should be uh, 1 half minus 1 over n, because all n edges make up 360 degrees, which is exactly 1. That would be my guess. Uh, I don't know what uh, the exact reasoning is of the proof. I'd have to look at it. But I can say for certain that that statement is not true. It is, it is a false statement that the vertices that are at the, uh, the end points of the edges... All out of 360 degrees. So we're, we're more than likely dead. I actually definitely, definitely think that this is a tough matchup. I'll absorb the two. Some serious pain here. Must kill this. What a tough matchup, man. Excuse me. So this could be explosive rune or counter spell or potion of polymorph, but if it I mean if it's counter spell then fuck. We are fucked. You should shoot me in the face for sure. No matter what it is, shoot me. It's the correct decision. Or maybe if I have one of my non-existent two mana spells. I arguably could have waited a turn to play this counter spell. So this could be an explosive rune, which the skulking guys can eat. Someday I'll be just like you. Well, now we know a way to get a minion on the board, huh? I still think that we lose. This is, I mean, this is a, this is a hard game to win. Oh my god! Thank God. I 
me I can blow this up, deal 15 damage, and just heal for 15. I think that's probably pretty good. But I'd prefer that he Pyroblast me. Yeah. Yeah. Correct play is this. Because if that's an explosive rune or potion, polymorph. I mean, we got fucking <laughs> lucky. However, I still think I'm playing well. I still think I'm playing well. I'm kind of low energy. Just trying to be zen today. What to do? What to do? I'm telling you, man. Not sure what he's supposed to learn. He played well. His deck is well constructed. It's better than mine. And then I just pulled a gin card, you know? It's gotta suck. I'm not out of the woods yet. But that does help. Alright. Six turns. Could have just ripped Frostlitch Jaina and end it. Lundell9 says, I honestly think you're the luckiest Hearthstone player. Oh, 100%. 100%. I'm absolutely, undeniably, without exception, the luckiest Hearthstone player that's ever lived. It's okay. Gotta play him, because either that puts us in a position to win against an ice block, or we take one damage, and then we have an arcane artificer that is not going to be blowed up. Meteor myself, man. You win. Pretty lucky. <laughs> All right. It's so funny that we like <laughs> play play like a couple unbelievably epic games and then we just like queue up against a murloc and it kills us on turn four and i'm like okay <laughs> actually on on his turn four we're we're still at three mana we're still at three mana <laughs> <laughs> fight with oh god his name is apocalypse cow all right that's great Gonna chill on the medieve. Sometimes you just rip a hollow zeal, you get a zero mana pyroblast. I mean we did we we were able to see into his soul though. Just just not not easy to do. So he's dealing 4 damage now. He needs precisely 
Murloc War Leader to clear this. Or a Rallying Blade. Those are the only two ways that he can deal with this in his deck. Okay. We're just going to do this, and then we're going to again just plan on this turn five. Play out. Okay, so he's a little he's a little bit more beat downy and a little bit less swarmy if he's running a blessing of kings. Not a lot. I mean, some of the beat down decks do have like one blessing of kings or something like that. So in a lot of ways, this is this is a good outcome because this is a high damage card and this is a high damage card, and we're just going to get rid of him right now. Obviously, the big threats are Sunkeeper Tarim. Uh, but he's not quite able to build boards at the pace of the other Paladin. So I can be a little less cautious with my sweepers. So this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This is fine. Yep, so this guy is great. He got us our casino card. I would expect that this is going to be Resurrect from the Dead. It's the most sensible one for him to want to run. Okay, so he has the 1-2 back in his hand again. It's great. Now we... I think that I just want to Raven Familiar and just see what happens. I might Raven Familiar and Medivh's Valet, because I think that that's an excellent way to sort of slow the pace down. I still really don't know whether I'm supposed to keep this or not. Okay, so... It's fine. Excuse me, you are on Could take a ton of damage. Murloc decks are most threatening in the first, like, six, seven turns. So, yeah. Wind Fury! Well, good, he didn't, doesn't have Wind Fury. That would be the real annoying one. Plus, damage is annoying, too. Great. Super great. Right away. This is where things get easier. He doesn't have a lot of charge. A lot of these decks don't run the 2 1. Call the swarms. I guess divine favor. I think that's good. This this almost certainly had the resurrect with this. That makes the most sense. So still have some of my high value dudes. Part of me wants to just deflam out, you know, Mr. Jenkins. In the form of Baron Geddon. Just total kamikaze with 8 health left. Well, that sucks. We lose. This is almost certainly the resurrect. Yeah. Well 
I'm not too torn up about it. I mean, our losses have been to uh, a triple Rin and, uh, you know, two more Lockadins. At least it wasn't turn four. Uh, I do have that. I think the lack of Arcanologists is what's hurting in that matchup, but I'm sort of okay just conceding that that kind of stinks sometimes. All right, so what we really want to draw is Frostlich Jaina. Maybe should have Cavaltomed for the secret. I mean, that's that's one alternative, but then I'd have to play it. And he'd still be doing stuff, so. Is someone injured? Okay. Okay, so in this matchup, there's three pre-stacks that I'm thinking of. One is the traditional grindy control priest, which I believe that I have an advantage in, but my enemies continuously rip Frostlish Jaina, which is difficult. So that's one. Pretty much every priest deck is running a dragon core, so another Spite Historians is not very telling. The second type of deck that I'm, um, I'm actually quite a bit worried about is the blow you up with inner fire deck. So drawing the Skulking Geist kind of ends his life instantly uh, in that setting. So that's what I'm gunning for. Um, the third one is a Spiteful Summoner deck, which only runs four spells. Two Free From Ambers, two Mind Controls. So in that circumstance... Okay, so it's a Shadow Visions. Um, somehow I missed the Shadow Visions. I think it's because I was typing Eric. Um, Shadow Visions is typically indicative of, a, of not of Spiteful Priest, so we can sort of cross that off. But I am a bit worried about... Um, greater Healing Potion. Okay, I, I'm starting to think it might actually just be a controlly Priest. Anyways, um, against a the Inner Fire deck that's just trying to blow me up, it's, it's obnoxious. It's really annoying to play against. Um, some of the signals that I'm going to be looking for is Cabal Talon Priest, the 3-4 that adds health. And sometimes a Twilight Drake um, is not included in the control -E Priest, but I think we're actually up just against a Grinder Priest. I think it's a Grinder Priest. Oh, how's my little princess cat? I'm petting you for good energy, because you're a good cat. Oh, yeah, maybe some tummy time. Oh, you've got a very... Oh, there's a stretch. Oh, stretch those legs, little kitten. Lowest value card is the Medivh's Valet. Just run that out and wait patiently. I don't see a large reason to dirty rat. Right around turn six, he hasn't played a Spiteful Summoner yet. Oh, excuse me, not Spiteful Summoner, a Draconid Operative. Um, I think this is okay to do. Just playing it really slow. Should add a kitty cam. I like my kitties. This is nice, because in case he was some sort of weird resurrect you, kill you guy. Could have been preparing to do massive mind blasts. Okay. Shoot like this, thing like that. We're at nine cards, so if I go this, 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 I'll lose three cards and gain three cards. 
and I'm trying to just play him out. Honestly, that's so stupid. This is so stupid. Do you ever drink tea? Well played. Um. Thank you. Sometimes, not as much. I think tea is nice and calming. I think I should always get more opportunities to do tea. Power word shield. Power word shield. Divine. Divine spirit. Divine spirit. This so again hints strongly to me that he is a very slow, grindy guy. We're just going to blow it up, because with no threats on the board, I can continue to gain armor, which does give me some protection in case he is trying to burst. There was once a man who tried to climb my mountain. I saw him far away and wondered what he would bring, but then through my binoculars, I saw him break his little angles and stumble back down to the foot of the mountain. Poor guy. Never got a chance to know. You asked for it. I think none of these are valuable. The valuable cards in this matchup are Polymorphs, Frostlich Jaina, and the Skulking Geist. And because he plays essentially no threats early on, I can hard mulligan for those. GG. So we've lost two games to Murloc Paladin, one game to a triple Rin deck, uh, and won the rest of our games in a nice, fun fashion. <laughs> so we've played six games, we've been live for almost two hours. <laughs> Control Mage! So this is nice. This already indicates to us that he is, in some form or another, a Control Warlock. Sweetie cat, you used to stick your little kitty. Oh yeah, you want the tummy time? Yeah, no, give me a kiss. Yeah, hi. Yeah, let's do tummy scratches. Alright, excuse me, honey. She gets really mad. She's pushing her feet against my mouse hand. She does not want me to be there. <sighs> oh my goodness. Look at our hero power. It's so busted. We just shoot people. Oh, you're sitting up, huh? Yeah, I mean, these pieces of paper are pretty comfortable, you know. Okay. So this... Once upon a time, I thought that this meant that he was definitely a Q-block. But now we're not 100% positive. And I think that this is an okay time to play an Arcane Tyrant. It's a little early, can be disruptive to him when he's low on mana. If it's later in the game, he'll have his Amethyst Spellstones already buffed up and he'll just blast it down. I mean, he could very well have that right here. Okay. So, I, I, think, I think that this is safe to do. It's a Q block. All right, let's just let's just bring a whole bunch down to the party, yeah. Should have attacked first. So that's great. That's just fantastic, right? What's the record of this deck opening up? Uh, 36 and 20 is the record. 36 and 20. <laughs> See? Look at me. I'm a learner. See, I'm just going to play it to gain the armor. These two mountain giants are down. Faceless down. Void down. That's nice. There's not many cards that I'm disappointed to draw right now. It hurts some, but, you know. This could be really bad. I think the most correct thing to do is to play this. We're gonna need a little bit of hope here. Didn't get it.
That sucks. The, these decks, the way that I think that I'll lose against this, even though somehow I haven't yet, the way that I'll lose against it is if he's able to just lay down a ton of burst really, really, really quickly. Ball slits chain, it would be the nut draw here. When can we see you play Artifact? I don't know, when it's out. <laughs> I don't know, I have control over it. As soon as I can, I guess. It's my answer, you got toasted. So, like, for instance, a way that we could just get Burst down is that if he has Blood Reaver Gul'dan in hand, he will have had um, three killed Void Lords. Three killed Doom Guards and only one killed Void Lord, so. This permits him to resurrect three Doom Guards, three Void Callers, and one Void Lord. <laughs> Some twisting netters. I'm like, yes. The end is coming. Now, what what does that signal to us? It's a very valuable card. Very low on health. I mean, again, if he has Blood River Gul'dan, we're dead. He should have Blood Reaver Gul'dan. He only has five cards left in his deck. Yeah, so that just that just kills us. And I mean, this this I would say this stunk. It's okay. It's totally okay. We have a superlatively high win rate against this deck. So we're gonna go win, lose, win, lose, win, lose for a little bit, but I think we're playing well. The games are pretty good. Lungus says the titles tend to be wrong if you get to the stream early. What, what do you mean, Lungus? Like, if you are here before I'm live? If you're here before I'm live, it, it'll, it should definitely show yesterday's um, stream information on there. Your soul shall be mine. You asked for it. Okay. Lungus says yes. Yeah, so like, yeah, no, definitely for sure. <laughs> Whenever I see something like that, my little alarm bells go off, and I'm like, "Oh my god, is something really wrong on day 19?" Ah! We did discover a a bug recently, which is that if I sometimes I move events around, like um, I was gonna play Dota on a day, and then I had the eye thing go wrong, so I just moved the event to the next Wednesday. Or there was this one Hearthstone event that I kept I, I scheduled on a Thursday, but then I was like, "Wait, no, Surviving Mars comes out on Thursday. Let me move that to next Tuesday." And then I was like, "Actually, you know." I don't remember the specific dates, but I moved it around a couple of times. And what happens is that when you create an event on day9.tv, it schedules a notification to be sent out. And when you move it to a new time, it also schedules a new notification to be sent out at that new time. Which means that the old notification still hasn't been deleted, so there are some people getting some notifications for things that were not happening. An incredible nice. Mortal Coil. So we don't know the precise nature of this control lock, but... I mean, it looks pretty... Oh, God, that's so dirty. Ascore Games has finally got off work. Hey, a chat. Happy Friday, Ascore Games. So we don't really know anything. Our enemy has been revealed. This is good to kill the dark packs, but apparently not soon enough. 
again, the way that this deck beats my deck is if he like basically doesn't play the Void Lords, just continually cumes Doom Guards, and then gets an insane Blood Reaver Gul'dan. Oh my god, Snorlax is 10 minutes till I'm off work, then heading home to LAN all weekend. Ooh, what games are being played? Hey, sweetheart. Yeah, let me let me arrange the legs in your favorite way. No, relax. There you go. I'm doing it for you, honey. Yeah, it's a good cat. Wow. Fuck, that's pretty fucking unlucky. Well shot. Excuse me. <laughs> that just that just sucks. That's all that is. Whole hell of a lot of Overwatch and Bloodborne. Oh my god, that does sound awesome. Hi, sweetie pie. Oh, I got a lap cat. This smells a little bit like a Blood Reaver Gul'dan situation. He's willing to do that trade. Side effects. No. Oh, this beat. Come on, what the fuck? Ouch. Oh, that's a gin card right there. All right, Despy, you've rearranged. I hope you're happy. And, oh, she's vibrating with intensity. Oh my god, my little princess cat. It's only at eight mana. He hasn't played the skull yet. He's just gotten one Doom Guard from a yes, lackey. Okay. Okay, this makes me comfortable running it out. So, if I were him, I would run into this. Oh my god. Oh my god, Witty Adrian, Memorial, posting and chatting about them, their one month projects. Mm -mm -mm. So sweet, so good. I'm content to do this thing. Whew. <laughs> oh, oh my God. We didn't win, but that's it's really good. God, I just... You... This cat brings me a lot of joy and love and comfort. Comfort is really a big word I want to stress with this little kitty. Yeah, I'm just... I'm not, no, this is my cup. This is my cup. I know you really want to investigate this. Oh. You know, she brings me joy and comfort, but sometimes she just wants to stretch out and get tummy time. Okay, let me just go ahead and re-elevate this. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Hey, don't bite me. Don't chew on me. Don't- Hey! Okay, what did Nomferatu blow up? Meteor? Okay, that's fine. I must hey, I know you're happy, but you can't hurt Dad like that. It hurts. It hurts when you hurt Dad. Do you understand? Hey, tss. Hey, I know you're playing, but like, you gotta let go. No, okay, we're gonna splash you with water. Splash you with flecks of water. Okay, there you go. Kind of sunk her teeth in pretty hard, but that's okay. It's my good little cat. All right, what do we want to do here? Um, we could we could flame strike. I think that's pretty cool. This will give us one little guy. Which one got hit? Animations go. She sunk her teeth in pretty hard, man. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. I love my little my little kitten. Sorry. Let me just 
I have a I have the, the the bendy leg stand. I gotta inch this up just a little bit because my huge mug's in the way. Not like my huge day nine mug, but I mean like. I don't mean myself. I was feeling low on health earlier, but now I'm high on health, and things are going well. Uh, this feels very much so like a hellfire is about to go down, or a defile, or some such thing. Great. Let's casino our way into some more spells, yeah. Oh my god, that's a great one to get. Just too good. It's just too good. Plus, I got another Halazeal coming, you know. <laughs> yeah, let me just. Ah, uh, come on, little bendy legs, work with me. There we go. Now, now it is correct. Kisses to all of you. Okay, maybe we need to bend it down a little bit. I didn't account for the leaning back. See, is this mine? Am I in the frame? So many possibilities. Mm. Oh, and I think I actually turned this a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's what was going wrong. I had, I had zoomed in a scosh, so. Darkness. What? Sean, why are you so big? This is play two elementals to upgrade, so that's one elemental. And I have an arcane tyrant. That That's actually going to have value. And my face is what? Thanks, Sean. <laughs> I blew a kiss at Marcus, and his eyes and mouth began to just eject fluid. He's like, ah, it's awesome! <sighs> Alright, Werebear, like you just don't care. I I greet you. Blood Reaver Gul'dan. What is this phone number? What is this weird phone number that has called me? What is this area code? Greetings, blah blah blah. Just not not so scary, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Four cards and ten cards. So I play this and probably just shoot like that, yeah. Battle Cup for Dota this weekend? Maybe. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna Google this phone number. See what the results are. I don't want to say it out loud. What is this? Oh my god, it's a fucking robocaller. No way. Time melts away. God, ro I don't know what happened recently, but are you, are you guys getting like way more robocalls than you ordinarily do? Like, is this just me, or is this happening to you? Like, I, I used to get none. I used to get none. All will serve. I knew it. So funky, man. Uh, I, I think it's not a big deal either way. Using an app called Haya to help block them. Interesting. I'm almost out of cards. I'm almost out of cards. 
Because I think they have a pretty nice play with Dragon's Fury and Medivh. Medivh's really nice in this matchup. Yeah, I don't know what it is, because I, I have received essentially no Robocalls in like... Yes. I think someone messed up. But why in that order? You just really don't want me to have the big dudes? Soon enough, I'm going to be able to upgrade this lesser ruby spellstone. Just need to get an arcane artificer or an arcane tyrant. Sort of casino y mood. I think Nizoth is not good in this deck because of these, these, this. Um, so let's see here. Let's. Time melts away. So we're going to deal a lot or a little. It's a lot. It's quite a bit. Long, dramatic, slow-ass games. Take him to fatigue! Hi! Hi! That's my little princess, my little biting anger girl. Yeah, I'm gonna put move my mouse way over here to kind of trick you a little bit. Ooh, what'd you remove? Uh-oh, that's my elemental. You wanna, do you wanna sit in my lap? Are you sorry? It's okay. Why are you biting me? I love you. I love you. Yeah, smell me. Yeah, you're just, you're really hyped up. You've got a lot of energy. Yeah, chew on the paper. It's pretty good. Yeah, you're in a bad mood, huh? Wow. Okay. Well, I think Despy's a little angry. And the person that we really need to apologize to is our opponent. God, that is so stupid. You okay? But you get all the best food, and we play string all the time. What's wrong? I love you. Yeah, look, here's my hand. Wow. Oh my god, she's like recoiling from me. You know, let's run out this lady. This is just like insta-twisting nethers. What I need to do is I need, I need it. We're gonna need to take a string break. The jealous of Jaina. Thank you. It's quiet, man. Yeah, no, I think our cat's a little grumpy. What I do to her? I don't know. I think she's just maybe a little territorial. We've spent so much time together in the last week. <laughs> My arm kind of hurts. We got little cat teeth marks in there. Hi. Wow. Okay, look, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna get the water, okay? Wow. I, I, I know you guys can hear that, because she's like... Arr, arr. Hmm. You okay? Feed now. Yeah. There's my arm. Yeah, hi. Where's it going? Okay, you're pretty happy, huh? You're just wound up. Yeah, I love you. It's okay. Yeah, you can chew on that. It's a tape measurer. Nice. Yeah, now you're happy. This cat is so temperamental. Oh my god. But I am the Despy Whisperer. This is just preparation for when I have 
a daughter of my own instead of a daughter cat. She's having a bad day. Dad, I don't understand. I'm like, maybe I don't. Just a dad. Who knows? You know. <laughs> my actual daughter like bites my forearms. Ah, dad. All right, so we 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 have gone win lose win lose win lose win lose win lose win lose. We're just gonna take a, ourselves a brief break. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just take. I'm thinking not not insanely long, but just four minutes because I want to make sure that we uh, play some string with my baby cat because she's a little she's a little bit wound up. Yeah, she's in the mood for that. And then we're gonna come back. And we're gonna try to grind our way up to legend. Legend till seven from heaven. <laughs> 